a light bar AD is attached at A and C to gliders that can move freely along the inclined box. If the rod BE is vertical, determine the tension in the cord and the forces acting on the bar AD at A and C induced by a weight W. The first free body diagram is the one for the glider at A. The glider is constrained by the inclined bar. The contact is frictionless and therefore this constraint is represented by a force normal to the bar. The glider is also attached by a pin to the bar A, B, C, D and therefore in the free body diagram we show two forces. For the glider at C, the situation is pretty similar. The constraint due to the bar is removed and replaced by a force normal to the bar and the pin is removed and uh, it is compensated by two forces. Next, let me look at the free body diagram for the horizontal bar and the weight. At A, I show two forces that the glider exerts on the bar. These forces are shown in green because these two forces are connected to these two forces by the third law. At B, there is a cable and the constraint due to the cable is replaced with the force vertical pointing up at C, we have two forces that the glider exerts on the bar, and these green forces are connecting to these blue forces by the third law. Finally, we show the weight of the block at D. Now, let us write down equilibrium equations. I will denote the forces acting on the glider at A by AX, AY, and A prime. Some of the forces on X, some of the forces on Y, some of the moments about A is trivial because all the forces intersect the point and therefore all of them have zero arms and therefore the moment equilibrium gives us no interesting information about the force at A. The same story for the glider at C. Now we can focus on the beam. The first equation is sum of the forces on X sum of the forces on Y, sum of the moments about A, and uh, now we can put together all equations. We have three free body diagrams. The first two give us two equations each, and this one gives us another three. So we will combine the first two allows us to express AX and AY in terms of A prime. Then for the second glider, again, we will express CX and CY in terms of C prime. Now we can take the equations for the bar and replace AX, CX, AY, CY with the expressions in terms of A prime and 
C prime. Now, if we look at the last three equations, we see that we have three equations for three unknowns, A prime, C prime, and T. The solution is T is equal to W, A prime equal to minus C prime equal to minus W sine theta. Finally, we could go back and evaluate the forces. AX, AY, CX, and CY, and uh, put them back in, and the original free body diagram gets replaced with the free body diagram where all the forces have been determined. Thank you.